Okay, so uh, I finished all of the achievements in Civ 6 uh, about a week ago and um, someone else who finished about two hours before me posted about it on Reddit and there was pretty big interest for it so I figured I'd do a video uh, about achievements, how to get them a bit easier and uh, answer some questions that people had. Um, I got all of my achievements playing somewhat normal games uh, so I won't be talking about any of the obvious exploits you can do to win on turn one and so on uh, because let's face it uh, achievements are pretty pointless to begin with and if you're basically cheating to get them then in my opinion it becomes really pointless um, so I'll talk about how you can get them a bit more efficiently while still playing somewhat normal Civilization 6 games. So anyway, the 100 achievements can basically <clears throat> basically be sorted into a few groups. And they are 8 for each difficulty, 4 for each win condition, 6 for each map size and map type, uh, 8 different era starts, the 20 different leaders, and then there are 19 unique civilization achievements one less than the leaders because obviously there are two different leaders for greece and then there are 29 achievements that i would place in the other category i'll spend most of the time in this video talking about the civ unique achievements and the ones in the other category but we can start with the difficulty ones um, the important thing to know which you've probably already noticed is that uh, if you finish on one setting uh, you'll get the achievement for that setting as well as all of the settings below so you only need to win on deity to get all of them um, there are as i said ridiculous ways to get an easy win on deity which i don't think seems fun um, i do however think that it's perfectly fine to set up a game to make it a little bit easier to win so for example you can start a daily game with all the normal victory conditions barbarians on and so on but uh, you make your opponent congo on a dual map and you try to win a religious victory that's pretty easy way to uh, win on daily but you still have to play a civ game and you have to not die to the barbs or not be killed by your opponent and so on as far as the achievements for wing condition, map size, map type, era starts and the different leaders, you'll get pretty much all of those while you're going for the unique achievements. So you don't really need to start games specifically for those. You just make sure to change the map size and the type and era start depending on uh, what type of unique achievement you're going for. Um, so let's put up some of the easier achievements uh, among the other achievements. Um, these are the ones that are so easy you'll probably get them just by playing. In fact you've probably gotten most of them already if you played a few games. Uh, the exception might be LAN party if you only play single player and don't want to play multiplayer games at all. You can still get it by just starting a hot seat game that way you don't have to ruin a real multiplayer game for other players by joining and leaving. Uh, you might also be able to host a game and just put AI opponents in. I haven't tested that but uh, I think it should work. So let's instead go to the uh, Civ Unique achievements and go over all of them. Uh, the first one, Americus. As America make a national park of Crater Lake and both tiles of Yosemite in one game. Uh, apparently some people were confused by this and thought you had to put both of them in the same natural park, which would be pretty much impossible. Uh, but you only need to get a natural park at each of them, which is pretty hard anyway. Uh, the easiest way is probably to play a game on a huge map. And uh, if you haven't discovered all of the map, then launch a satellite to reveal the whole map. And then you just send a settler and naturalists to those uh, wonders and build natural parks there. 
Uh, Arabian Nights conquer a city with a Mamluk. That's a very easy one. You just make sure that a Mamluk uh, gets the final hit when you capture uh, a city. Uh, Huey Tlatuani as Aztecs on a standard sized map attack an opponent while receiving plus 16 combat strength uh, bonus for having all of the luxuries. Um, that one can be a bit tricky since it has to be a standard sized map so you pretty much have to get uh, all of the luxuries. Uh, you can make it easier by just having one opponent. That way uh, it's much easier to just build a lot of settlers and settle at locations where uh, the luxuries exist and once you get enough you just attack and you'll get the achievement. Um, you can see how many you have if you're at war already just by when you're about to attack it'll see how, uh, show you how much bonus you have or if you pull up the trade screen you will see all your luxuries and you can just count how many you have. It's a bit easier than uh, looking all over the map. Uh, Brazil is pretty easy as well. Um, it's um, one of those achievements that are suitable for a late era start. Uh, since uh, those are very late wonders in the games. Um, the only thing you need to make sure of is that you have valid locations for both wonders in the city before you uh, put the first one down. So Estadio do Maracanã needs flatland next to an entertainment complex and Cristo needs to be on a hill. Uh, China crouching Tiger Hidden Cannon, um, playing as China end a turn with 5 Crouching Tigers on Great Wall Tiles. It's also very easy, just make sure you have those 5 units. Um, the Great Wall doesn't need to be connected, so you can just put Great Wall Tiles on tiles that are useless anyway. And uh, you'll get it. Walk like an Egyptian, as Egypt build a Sphinx adjacent to the pyramids, both on floodplains. Also pretty easy, floodplains are easy to find when you start as Egypt. Get the pyramid down first, as I believe you have to do it in that order. At least it's um, a similar quest um, requires that. So I think you need to put the pyramid first and then a sphinx next to it. Fairly easy. For queen and country, playing as England on a huge map have a city on every continent at the start. Uh, of the turn. This is an example of why you should uh, check all the Civ uniques before you start a game since it can be a bit frustrating if you just finished a game on a huge map to get that achievement uh, and then you have to play on a huge map uh, again anyway to get uh, this one. As far as continents go make sure you use the um, continent uh, lens so that you can easily see which parts of the map are different uh, continents um, and then just uh, make sure you either conquer or settle a city and each of them and, uh, and you'll get the achievement uh, fairly easy. Uh, Lore Valley, France, create five chateaux in one city with the wine resource. For me this one was actually a little bit annoying because my first game as France I just played a pretty normal game and figured at, uh, before I finish the game, I'll just make sure to place five chateaus in uh, one of my cities and settle near a wine resource. Uh, but it turned out uh, the entire standard size map didn't have a single wine resource. So uh, in my case, I just restarted uh, at a later era where you have more units uh, until <clears throat> I found wine and put a city there. The only thing you need to make sure of is that there are enough tiles that are adjacent to rivers since that's the requirement for the chateau. Um, Germany, Third Crusade, playing as Frederick Barbarossa conquered the city-state of uh, Jerusalem. Um, you can either play this while you're uh, on a huge map while you're going for another achievement since that increases the chance of Jerusalem um, being on the map or if you want to you can do the complete opposite and start dual games uh, in which there are three city-states and just restart until you get Jerusalem and there's another quest I'll talk about later that is very similar, so you can search for both of them at the same time. 
Uh, Greece, 12 Olympians have 12 policy slots as Greece. This is easiest if you do it as uh, Pericles, since he gets the additional slot right away. Uh, then what you need to do is get the wonders that give you additional slots. So uh, that's Forbidden City, Potala Palace, Big Ben, uh, Alhambra. And there's also a great merchant, uh, Adam Smith, that gives you an extra economic policy slot. So you need three of those five, then the Pericles and a late game government uh, to get um, those 12. So it's uh, fairly easy as long as you um, plan for it. Uh, give peace a chance, India. On a huge map, receive plus 35 faith in one turn from the Satyagraha ability. Um, this was a bit annoying for me. I didn't do it the most optimal way. I played a normal game with normal settings on a huge map, all the AIs. Uh, and then I basically just played a defensive game trying to stay friendly with everyone and just wait until all the seven religion founders were at peace which unfortunately happened to take more than 300 turns um, so there are better ways to do it um, uh, from what i'm told uh, the amount of uh, great profits it's based on the map size so you can play on a huge map and take the number of players down to seven so that everyone has um, a religion less chance of a war with uh, fewer uh, players and uh, apparently if you make all of your opponents india as well there's a little bit higher chance that you'll stay at peace longer and that way you might get it fairly early before any wars uh, start Meiji Restoration, uh, another po potentially frustrating one, uh, it was for me at least. Playing as a Japan, I have a district with six adjacent unpillaged districts. So um, for me, when I did this, I first tried to put the districts uh, uh, between two cities in a, just a normal game, which happens fairly naturally pretty early. Um, that didn't work. So I thought that maybe, even though it doesn't say it, maybe it has to be in the same city. So I tried that. Uh, that also didn't work. Uh, and then uh, I noticed that it says unpillaged districts. So I figured maybe it's one of those silly quests where they have to have been pillaged first and then you repair them. So I actually gave away one of my cities in uh, trade. Uh, then declared war, attacked the city, pillaged all the districts, took it back, repaired all of them, but obviously that didn't work. Uh, finally, I got the achievement by putting the middle district in last. Uh, and in my case, I made sure it was a district that, required, that benefits from adjacency bonus, such as uh, industrial or commercial or holy or campus. Uh, but I've heard from others that it works um, by putting a neighborhood district in as well. Uh, but um, the guaranteed way to get it is at least to put the middle district in last. Uh, then we have City of Congo, uh, playing as Congo have a capital city with a population of 30. Uh, this is pretty easy, just make sure you um, focus the city on food and you build enough embansas so that you get the extra food and housing. You can also speed it up a bit by making sure that all of your trade routes are from the capital to cities that produce food. Uh, and then you should reach 30 uh, fairly easy. Uh, Norway, capture a settler with a long ship. This was actually also a bit frustrating because um, it doesn't specify how you have to capture it. So I just camped my long ship outside uh, one of my opponents on an island map. And when they tried to send a settler away to settle on another island, I captured it in the ocean. But that doesn't trigger the quest. What you actually have to do is use the unique longship ability and capture a settler that is standing on the coast. Uh, so that's the way you get the, uh, the Norway one. And still the easiest way is obviously playing on islands and just camping outside uh, 
uh, your opponents until you see them move a settler near the coast. Uh, missed that day in history class, clear nuclear contamination with a Roman legion. Uh, it's also fairly easy. Um, you can't start at the late era though, since um, then you won't be able to build the Roman legion. So you have to start in a fairly early era. Uh, and then just make sure you keep a Roman legion and don't accidentally upgrade it. <coughs> Sorry, upgrade it. And you should get that one. Trans-Siberian Railroad. Some people thought this was an almost impossible one. <clears throat> impossible one. It's actually pretty easy. Um, so uh, let's see. It's playing as Russia. I have a city that is at least 60 tiles away from your capital. Connected by a trade route and road at the start of the turn. So what you want to do is play on an inland sea map. If you play on a huge one. Since inland sea maps don't wrap around, the distance from left to right or west to east is really big. So even if you start somewhere in the middle, it's still pretty easy to get 60 tiles to a city uh, at one of the edges. So the only thing you need to make sure of is that um, you expand in one direction so that your capital is either uh, the most western or eastern city in your empire. Uh, also worth knowing is that you don't trigger the quest until the trade route is finished. So you have to wait 60 plus turns after you start the trade route uh, for it to finish. And um, the easiest way to count the tiles is uh, just when you're selecting the trade route. It says right on the screen how many um, tiles long it is. Um, and also make sure it doesn't get plundered while you're waiting. Scythian <coughs> Horse Rush, playing as Scythia, have 10 Saka Horse Archers in your army. That's very easy, you just build them 5 times and then you get double each time. Uh, Spain is also very easy, the Spanish Inquisition. You just um, launch an Inquisition with one of your Apostles and you'll get it. Uh, Epic of Gilgamesh, as, sorry, as Sumeria have the first great work of writing. Um, pretty easy you can either uh, get great rider points by rushing the drama poetry civic uh, that way you get the policy for um, great rider points and you also get the theater district if you want to go that way uh, or you can try to get uh, sun tzu early the great general that writes um, the great uh, sorry the art of war uh, moving on, uh, that was actually all of the Civ Uniques, so these three are uh, the city-state quests. Gift from the Storm God, receive a strategic re resource from Hattusa. Uh, pretty easy, uh, you'll probably get this by accident in one of your games, so you, you don't really have to aim for it. Uh, the next one uh, doesn't... Uh, immediately look like a city-state quest, uh, build a colossal head adjacent to a holy city with a temple. Uh, but it is, since the only way to build a colossal head is by being the suzerain of Laventa. So you just uh, look for Laventa in any of your normal games, become suzerain, and make sure that you build a colossal head uh, after you have a holy site with a temple, because it doesn't work if you do it in the wrong order. Uh, next one is for Nan Madol, uh, and that's also an easy one. If they're in your game, become suzerain and just pay the money to uh, uh, hire the military. Uh, then we have some of the other ones. Flight Slingulator, Airlift, a level 3 slinger. Uh, fairly easy, just in a normal game, you build a few slingers early. If you probably can get one of them to level 2 just by playing the way you normally would. And then the easiest way to get it to level 3 is probably by promoting it with the General or the Terracotta Army. Since by the time you can reach level 3 it's a bit risky to have it actually engage in combat. So that, that's probably the best way. And then you just make sure you don't accidentally upgrade it until you can uh, airlift it. Uh, 
The origin of species activate Darwin adjacent to the Galapagos Island uh, islands. Uh, another pretty easy one, you just uh, make sure you pick up Darwin. If you haven't fully explored the map when you have him, then just uh, don't use him immediately in case the Galapagos Islands show up. Um, and obviously if you discover the Galapagos Islands first, then just make sure you get uh, Darwin uh, by focusing some more points there or by passing on uh, previous great people. Uh, the next one have an army of land units and two armadas. Um, this is probably one of those you, you'll get by accident, otherwise it's, it's very easy and obvious what to do. Uh, then we have two similar ones, get five tech boosts in one turn and get five civic boosts in one turn. Both of these are fairly easy. You can just prepare for the Inspires or Eurekas, uh, for instance. Um, a, lot of, a lot of them come from tile improvements, so you can just wait until you place that sixth farm or that uh, mine on iron or whatever. Prepare a few of these and then if you accidentally get a boost from uh, goody hut or discovering something then you'll just trigger the other ones uh, you can also get a boost from having a certain amount of units and so you can just buy them during the same turn um, so just just look in the tech tree or the civic tree and it's pretty easy to uh, plan for five boosts in one turn oh and also there's uh, a lot of great people that provide Eurekas and inspirations. So that's another way to combine stuff. Um, then we have Luft Balloons. Use a bomber class unit to detonate a nuclear device as long as its base and nine observation balloons are located on the continent of Nena at the time of detonation. This is another one that you obviously don't create a game for. It's one you just uh, be aware of so that you, uh, at the end of your games, just check the continental lens, see if Nena is one of the continents. If it is, uh, conquer a city on it <clears throat> or send a settler there, build an um, aerodrome so um, that you can build a bomber there and you can also use it to airlift observational balloons that you produce in your other cities in the meantime or if you have enough gold you can just buy them all in that city uh, pizza party that was the last one i finished you can actually get it um, in a normal game if you're just paying attention so um, because you only really need to get Leonardo da Vinci uh, because you can either steal the great works if uh, the AI picks up uh, Michelangelo and or Donatello or you can conquer their cities. Uh, you don't even have to play as America since if America is in the game you can conquer New York and activate him there. It's ob obviously easier if you are America as well uh, but you, as I said you don't need to. Uh, if you play just to get this uh, achievement, then obviously you just focus a lot of uh, great people points on artists and on engineers. And if you're way ahead of the AI, then you just pick every great person just to get the, the new one on the list. Uh, but if it's close, then you pass so that the AI can uh, get the irre irrelevant one uh, and you can pick up the ones you need. Uh, Seven Wonders of the Post-Apocalyptic World launch a weapon of mass destruction with a unit and have it pillage Seven Wonders. Uh, the obvious ways to do uh, the obvious way to do it is to uh, launch it on one of your own cities, since usually you won't have the AI building that many wonders. Uh, the normal nuke just hits seven tiles so it's uh, fairly hard to do it that way since getting seven wonders on seven tiles is pretty hard with all the tile requirements so it's best to wait for thermonuclear and then it should be pretty easy as long as you've focused somewhat on building wonders in um, one of your cities or two nearby cities uh, repo man uh, this probably could have been in the other list with the easy one since you're, you're 
<clears throat> you've probably already stolen a great work in uh, one of your games. Even if you don't need them, it's fun to steal them just to uh, be Thomas Crown for a while. Uh, district 12, build every district type in one city and the Colosseum. It's uh, also pretty easy. The only thing you really need to make sure of to get is the Colosseum, obviously. Uh, and then getting the rest of the district shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, you can use the um, engineers to speed it up a little bit. I think there's two of them, uh, Bi Sheng and Ada Lovelace. They allow you to build one district more than the population limit allows, so you can finish this quest faster. Uh, moving on, we have Secret Service, have top secret access with five civilizations in one game at once. Uh, can be a bit tricky, but uh, you can look at the advisor uh, to see the recommendations to increase your access level. Uh, having spies on listening po uh, posts is one of the better ways, as well as uh, trading with them, sending trade routes, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and uh, sooner or later you should have top secret access with uh, five of them. Uh, silver Anniversary possess six silver luxury resources at the start of the turn. Uh, also pretty easy, it's one of those you just look after uh, in your normal games. If you discover a lot of silver in an area, you can just make sure to settle there or conquer there at some point uh, in the game and you should be able to get uh, all of those. Man on the Moon with a regular game, win a regular game with a science victory on any difficulty with any leader with a captured Egyptian city, having also activated Newton and Darwin. So this is another one that I didn't go for specifically. I just made sure that in most of my games that I predicted might go to a science victory, I just put Egypt in every one of them. And... Um, um, and then, uh, yeah, you've, if you've activated Newton and Darwin before you win, just make sure you capture an Egyptian city. So you just put Egypt, Egypt in your game and look after Newton and Darwin. Uh, so pretty easy. Uh, we are the champions, win a regular game with a religious victory, with your dominant religion being Zoroastrianism, and, the t and at the time of victory you are the suzerain of Zanzibar. Um, so I mentioned earlier when we were talking about Germany that uh, you can restart uh, and the, uh, dual games with three city-states uh, until you get Jerusalem and then conquer them. And the th same thing applies here. So you can do that at the same time. You just restart until you get uh, either Zanzibar and then you go for this achievement or you get Jerusalem and then you go for the other one. Uh, and if you're lucky, you might get uh, both in one. You won't. Um, selfie, win a regular game with a culture victory with your leader in the game as your opponent as well. Um, same thing here, you can just put a copy of your own leader in most games that you predict might go to a culture of victory. In fact, even when you plan for a domination victory, sometimes you accidentally get a cultural victory anyway. It's happened to me a few times. Uh, otherwise, um, just start a game specifically for this one and, and go for as much tourism as you can. Um, but like I said, you, you, you can get this um, almost by accident just by making sure that in all your big games you have a copy of your own leader in the game uh, as well. And then island hopping, win a regular game with a domination victory on any difficulty with any leader on a huge island plates map. Um, that's one. That's an example of like uh, planning ahead since in my case I did this one with England and that way you got the domination victory. This was pretty much my first game I finished so I got the domination victory, I got victorious achievement, I got England's unique achievement, I got the huge map achievement, the island plates achievement, this achievement and probably a few other you um, picked up uh, at the same time. 
however, if you're going just for this one um, specifically, then the easiest way is obvious, obviously to just have one opponent on the huge island plates map. Start at uh, a late era and just search and hunt for that uh, capital and, and you should win this one uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I also want to give you an example image, uh, a screenshot from one of my games. Uh, so this is basically showing that in, in my normal games, I was just preparing for uh, certain achievements uh, and just being uh, aware of uh, you know opportunities that might show up. So here I have uh, in a safe place between my cities, uh, I have a slinger that's level three because I want to do the airlift achievement. I also have a Roman legion for the um, uh, Roman uh, the Rome unique uh, achievement. Uh, and then the engineer is Leonardo da Vinci. And you'll also notice that two of my opponents are teddies. So this is just in case I want to go for the pizza party achievement. I can just conquer New York. It's a higher chance and easier if there are two teddies. Uh, but the game still feels normal uh, compared to just putting five of them. Um, and then the scientist is Darwin. And if you notice on the mini map, I'm uh, scouting the sea, the inland sea, just to make sure the Galapagos islands aren't, aren't there before I activate him. Uh, I'm not even sure they can spawn on an inland sea map, but I scouted it just to be sure. Um, so yeah, basically this is an example of uh, both preparing for a certain achievement and also being uh, aware that uh, an opportunity for another one might show up and if they don't then you can just activate them anyway. The reason I put them in a spot like this is because if I just have them in a city I might forget about it and accidentally activate them or upgrade them or something like that. Um, other than that, another tip is uh, to just play faster overall, like actual game speed. And um, I'm going to do another video on that since that's useful also for players that don't care about achievements, how you play your turns faster. And anything else? Uh, yeah, actually, there is one more thing if you look at the screenshot as i mentioned before about the achievement that requires that you conquer egypt there's also two cleopatras so there's double cleopatra double teddy just to increase the chance of getting those achievements while still playing uh, a normal game where i'm not aiming for them specifically so anyway that covers most of it if there are any questions just feel free to ask me and um, yeah thank you for watching